Hey, today we're working on this John Deere snowblower. It's running rich. When we're up at full throttle, it starts sputtering a lot, but in the rest of the throttle ranges down to idle, it runs great. If you have a snowblower with a Briggs & Stratton Snow Series engine, this is gonna apply to you. All right, so the first things we need to do here, we're gonna take off this choke knob, we're gonna remove the key, and we need to start removing plastic covers. This top cover here, as far as I know, uh, should just have these two fasteners there and there. So we're going to take those off real quick. Okay, that should be it. Pull that off. And then underneath here you'll see there's basically just two things. You got the wire for the ignition switch. We're just going to pull that straight off. And there is also a hose for the primer bulb. Um, I'm going to pull that off as well. That'll let us take this shield and put it out of the way. So the next thing we need to do is take off this lower shield here that goes in front of the carburetor intake. There's just a couple nuts right there and there. And I think that is it. Okay, so next there is a little bit of a uh, mesh filter here over the carburetor intake. We're just going to take off the washer and these spacers and then pull off the mesh filter. Next we need to remove this fuel line. Uh, this comes off the carburetor by unclamping the hose clamp and then the hose will just pull off the top. Next, you're going to need to take these studs out. These studs are what's holding the carburetor to a spacer that then goes to the intake manifold. For this, you need an E5 socket. Uh, this is a set I got off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to this in the video description. It's pretty cheap. There we go. Take those off, and then the carburetor's free. So the next thing that needs to be done is you need to take off the throttle linkage and the governor linkage. Those are right here. And those are just going to pull out of the holes that they're in. So I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers. This is going to help me unclip the black clip holding the uh, throttle linkage in place. There we go. Carburetor's off. So this is a fairly new carburetor. I put this on maybe about a year ago and the snowblower runs, but like I said, it runs too rich at full throttle. So there's no adjustments on this carburetor. So we're just going to replace it. Here we go. We have this uh, replacement carburetor from our friends at HIPAA. They sent me this. We're just going to put this on there and hope that that solves the problem. So when you open the box, it's packaged well. You got the new carburetor in here. It also comes with various linkages used for different engine applications, as well as new gaskets. They also send you a new air filter and pre-air filter. Uh, on the snowblower, we don't need that. This applies to different engine applications, but I'm going to keep it for other repairs in the future. Uh, they also give you a spark plug and a fuel filter. So here's the new carburetor from HIPAA. Here is the new kind of carburetor that I took off of there. They have different rods for the choke, so we need to take this white one off of the previous carburetor, take off the black one from the new one, and install the white one onto here. The other difference on these carburetors is that the new one from HIPAA does not have a port for a primer. So this hose that used to go to the primer bulb just won't be installed any longer. So taking off the choke rod is pretty easy. You're just going to put the choke in the open position. You're going to pull out the plate like that. And then once the plate is out, you can pull that plastic piece out. So I'm going to do the same thing to the previous carburetor. Pull out the choke plate. Pull out the rod. Now we're going to put this rod in the new carburetor. Then once that rod's in there, we're going to put in the metal choke plate. 
Something else on the new carburetor is it comes with this plastic bushing here where the throttle linkage goes. And the diameter hole in there is too small for the rod, so we're going to drill that out just a little bit. With that uh, wallered out, then we should be able to install it. So you're gonna take the new carburetor, first put in the throttle linkage. It's just gonna push into place. Then you're gonna take the governor spring and you're gonna put that through the small black hole on the side. So after that, we're gonna put those threaded uh, studs back in. Then you're going to use your E5 socket to tighten those studs. And after that, you're ready to reinstall the fuel line. So we're just going to push that onto the inlet. And then use your pliers to move your hose clamp back down so it holds it in place. That's going to go underneath the bar on the inlet. Um, so right now I think we're ready to do a test start even though we don't have all the plastic covers on we should be good enough to start it Okay, so our test run was good, so now we're just going to put the rest of the covers back on this thing and then we'll do another test run after everything's back on. First we need to put the gasket on the uh, carburetor intake, then we're going to put on the uh, mesh filter. There are then two spacers that go on the studs and then washers that go after the spacers. Next you're going to put on the bottom plastic cover and then put on the nuts that hold that in place. Okay, after that's on there, then we're gonna put on the top cover. So first you need to hook up the wires for the ignition switch. Those just slide into place. And remember this new carburetor doesn't have a line for the primer bulb, so this doesn't do anything any longer. We don't need to hook anything up to it. Next, you're just gonna put in the two screws on the top that'll hold the plastic cover down. And then once that's in place, you're going to put the choke knob back on. Lastly, we'll put the key back in. All right, now we're going to test start it one more time just to make sure all this stuff's back on there right. I'll give it a second. I just turned the fuel back on. I need to let it run from the tank to the fuel bowl. It's throwing snow pretty decent, but there is another problem. You'll see when I turn around and come back the other direction. As you can see, it's got a broken shear pin, so the left side of the auger isn't spinning. 
I'm gonna get that replaced and we'll run it again. I'm gonna say this fix was a major success. Thanks HIPAA for sending us a new carburetor. If you guys have a snowblower, uh, whether it's a John Deere or a different brand, using a Briggs & Stratton Snow Series engine and you need a new carburetor, check out the video link below in the description. You'll also get a discount by using my link.